Thank you so much. That was absolutely riveting, and um, I think you guys would have killed me if I threw him off the stage, so we had to continue. Um, now it is question time. The conference proceedings, uh, applications for accreditation has increased, so has uh, book publishing has also increased um, because of the new research out of policy of 1st of January 2016. But in discovering all these amazing things, we also discovered that there are quite a lot of questionable practices within journal publishing specifically. Um, you can imagine that this is a very sensitive matter and that when we discovered um, that there were quite a lot of questionable practices, and we call them questionable practices, uh, because we also discovered it was very dangerous to call them predatory practices. Because you have to interpret and take it case by case and see what exactly is happening here. Some was just journals just blooming and getting into mega journals, so there was an increased activity in publishing. And then, of course, there were some journals and some authors which had um, questionable uh, practices going on. The problem with this uh, report is that we have people, we have institutions, we have to go very careful about with it. So we have a panel now together, and we are discussing with both the Department of Higher Education Training and Science and Technology as to how we're going to release these results. And you can imagine that we will most probably <coughs> have to engage on institution institution basis with DVCs of research to actually address these practices. So it's highly sensitive, um, and one cannot even start indulging or, or, or even uh, making available this, this uh, particular data. So, so that's the one good news, we are doing something about it, so we're almost in a sense naming and shaming, um, which is uh, quite scary once you start dealing with it. That's on the one hand side. We also realized that um, collaborations are actually increasing in this regard. Um, and that we have to look at um, what's happening. Do institutions actually acknowledge and recognize uh, collaborations? Because as you know, according to the research out of policy, mm -hmm. as soon as you have more than five um, collaborative editors, they ignore the rest. So we looked at the incidence of how many authors are actually collaborating with each other. Um, so there's a huge amount of five and more, um, up to about 50, that's uh, one of the largest, well not the largest, but one of the bigger ones, and then a couple of a hundred and more collaborations in South Africa. So those ones on high energy physics, physics, um, chemistry, um, etc. that we have witnessed those collaborations. But now the problem is, is that um, institutions use the Department of Higher Education and Training and Research Output Policy to evaluate and to um, evaluate the performance of the researchers. So those are very large collaborations <coughs> do not get recognized in incentivizing for collaborations. So um, we are now busy distributing our questionnaire to the DVCs of research, and after that we will publish our evidence-based consensus study on this um, as well. So we, we have been busy for quite a while, this seems like time, but this particular year is going to be very interesting for us to divulge uh, all the results of these reports. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Susan. I think you've answered the elephant in the room. Um, I'm Robert Moropa from UP. Got a question for, for you, uh, Greg. Have you? Away. Yeah, I mean, you. Yeah, it's, it, I mean, since you've been thinking, and I'm, I'm also posing this question. I think to people who've been thinking uh, and working in this area. Uh, currently, we've got rankings, and you've indicated that it's, they are really not useful for us, and and colonization and all that. Have you given a thought in terms of what what is it that we can use in in their place? Have you are there any indications in terms of what what are the possibilities? I think there are two levels on which they could we one could take that. One is um, rankings as done by journal publishing and so on. And there I would ask the question, if we'd started out with digital media and hadn't thought of journals, hadn't put journals in, how would we have used digital media to publish? I think it would be a very interesting uh, question, for example, to take up with graduate students. What would we have envisaged had we been open-minded about what digital media do? Um, and that would be one way of approaching this, just setting up a much broader platform. When it comes to the rankings, it's a perplexing problem 
because they're very biased towards international um, recognition. And I suspect we may have to look at being much clearer about the, st the strategies of individual universities. For example, UCT competes like crazy for rankings, and on one level it's good because South Africa is profiled in the world. On the other level it's bad because they go and haul public health students out of writing for their communities in order to write a whole lot of journal articles. So I think it's a matter of better strategizing and having horses for courses. Don't try and push everybody to do the same thing. There's some universities that are much better at other things. For example, DUT, with the wonderful stuff it produces on its technology front that's not recognized, if one profiled that better, do you think that would work? Because I have no pat, easy, one-off answer. I just think we need to have more, various, more varied approaches to what we do and not fall completely for the competitive. Um, Jean-Claude Guédon said we must look for quality rather than excellence. Excellence is jumping the high, you know, the pole vault. Quality is being able to run effectively. Thank you so much. No, it just occurs to me that, uh, you know, I didn't explain my, you know, the context. Mm -hmm. I, uh, a few days ago, I listened to, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Khozo, uh, who was the president of the NRF, and he was explaining about, you know, the, the, the importance of rankings, rating uh, of researchers, and basically what he said was that it is a system whereby you identify good quality researchers to train future researchers. So it, 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 it occurs to me you do need to have a system whereby you can identify quality researchers. So how do we, what, how do we deal with that? that? That was really the context of my question. Do you want to respond? I, th I think just in one sentence, my answer would be the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is that you need to evaluate them according to the right, you know, the right thing that suits your strategy. Evaluating everybody according to how many journal articles they've published, how much they've managed to get into the brains of Americans is not what we need to do. We need to think perhaps of that question, how have we contributed to our society, how have we contributed to the arts, uh, as well as all the scientific issues. So literally having a variety of measures rather than this one that we're forcing all the time. Yeah. Okay. I thank you very much. My name is Ingram Matang from Tiny University of Technology Library. Um, I just to challenge a little bit uh, the speaker on the transform, the decolonization of uh, uh, <laughs> education. That uh, I think that I was trying to ride a dead horse here uh, by trying to decolonize uh, language issues. Because in, in, in from where I am standing, it even how it, no matter how unfair it was, it happened, but it. It has some bit of advantages now because we can be able to to consume uh, uh, scientific research in the same language. As much as if the, the, the language of science was in the number of African languages we have, other than something perhaps that, 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 that has helped us to be able to communicate. That's the language issue. And the other one is that one of decolonizing the publication. That one is isn't it going to cause some sort of in uh, If we say, for example, we only publish in the local journals, we, we try to use the local journals. And uh, are we closing ourselves into the opportunities of interacting with the other countries? I think the answer is rather that if you publish in a local journal, and you publish very good stuff, you are as good as anybody who publishes in an international journal. It's that hierarchizing that's so damaging. And as for language, once again, don't denigrate those who publish in African languages or other languages or regard it as inferior. I think it really just, my, my main objection is that I, this idea of overseas English is best. In other words, Donald Trump is international and Nelson Mandela is local. <laughs> Any questions for Dr. Raju? Are you all going to go back and close your reference desk and start doing <laughs> publishing? <laughs>
If no further questions, then I will close the session and thank the presenters. This was a very interesting session. Thank you so much.